What's good? It's your brother YK The Truth, and I'm here to debunk Cootie Mayo's claim that DNA tests are false. Okay? Another so called Indian claims that DNA testing is false. So I'm going to beat him up with his own sources. This is going to be a powerful video. See, when you're thirsty for a sauce, you end up chopping your own head off. Now, let's get it. Let's play this video real quick, y'all. In this article, it says here, genetics, the science and business of genetic ancestry testing. All right, Deborah A. Bolnick and all these uh, scientists, professors, all right, that contributed to this. Consumers often purchase these tests to learn about their race or ethnicity but there is no clear cut connection between an individual's DNA and his or her racial or ethnic affiliation. Again, there is no clear cut connection between an individual's DNA and his or her racial or ethnic affiliation. That's three testing. All right, Deborah A. Bolnick. All right, so look, that says Deborah A. Bolnick, right? Now, a simple search of those people I'm telling you I'm telling you it's, this is not even funny like these people do no real research right so he runs to this article that's debunking you know um genetic testing and DNA testing right and he's citing those people <clears throat> now a smart person would just go and Google those people, right? Now, what if I told you that I Googled three of those people? Deborah A. Bolnick wrote a book called Reflecting of Our Past, How Human History is Revealed in Our Genes. So she wrote a book about DNA. So DNA testing has to be real. It says genetic studies of African Americans in the United States have shown that they too trace their ancestry to multiple source populations. Small numbers of enslaved Africans were brought to the American colonies in 1619. Genetic studies. What is genetic studies? DNA. This is the very first person that you cited. Deborah A. Bolnick. Okay? And Deborah A. Bolnick wrote a book called Ancestry, Identity, and Race. Okay? This chapter examines race, ancestry, and cultural identity and suggests that it is important to examine whether each necessarily reflect the others. Studies of genetic variations in African American populations have further demonstrated the imprecise relationship between genetics and cultural identity. The concept of race first emerged with European colonialism and the rise of the transatlantic slave trade so if cootie mayo is one of those who be, who don't believe in the uh, transatlantic slave trade right deborah a bolnick wrote a book called ancestry identity and race okay not only that let's go back to her other book Reflections of our past, how human history is revealed in our genes. 
Look at this. All throughout this book, they are doing genetic studies. Hold up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is for all of our people who don't. Because 90% of the people who follow Cootie Mayo and Dan Calloway, they don't believe in the outer Africa theory. They don't. Now look what this says. Written by Deborah A. Bonick. The earliest evidence of anatomically modern humans has been found in Africa. It dates back almost 200,000 years ago. The chapter outlines the fossil and genetic evidence for an African origin and expansion of anatomically modern. Look at this. It's, it's African all throughout her book. A number of studies have looked at the most recent ancestor for Y chromosome DNA and found that it too supports an African origin and suggests in subsequent dispersion out of Africa. Oh my God, is this the person? That you is saying that DNA testing is a hoax? Cootie Mayo, I'm destroying you. This is why y'all don't want no smoke with YK The Truth. Because I'm going to beat you up with your own references and your own sources. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Analysis of Neanderthal gen genomes from ancient DNA shows that Neanderthals interbred with modern humans after modern humans populations began expanding out of Africa. Out of Africa. And this is Deborah A. Bonick. This is your first source, homie. You got to hold that. You got to hold that. You got to hold that. Deborah A. Bonick. But let's go to the next one. Duana Full Wheelie, if I'm pronouncing her name right. And she too wrote a book called The Enculturated Gene, Sickle Cell, Health Politics and Biological Difference. Right? And what does it say in her book? The Afro-American population has incorporated at least 15% of Caucasian genes in particular. But my question is, how does she know if DNA testing is not real? If it's a hoax? This is her book. Do you see it? Do you see her name? Duana Full Wheelie. Do you see that? Central haplotypes. On the other hand, to be able to work on African populations in Africa. Okay? And all you got to do is type in African American. Or go back. Let's type it in. Let's see what, let's see what we find. African peoples who were brought to American shores with it in their bodies. Is this how we got sick? Most African Americans, not Aboriginals, have sickle cell. This is one of the major debunks of the Native Americans, so-called Native Americans. African people who were brought to America shores with it in their bodies to fight malaria. 
African-American television star named Isaiah Washington announced his plan to travel to the small West African country of Sierra Leone to obtain the world's first DNA passport. He often spoke publicly about this new invention that would make him a citizen of the war-torn based on mutation in his mitochondria DNA that subsequently resemble those that geneticists have found in the Mende people. This is your source? See, the problem with your source is this. One of the problems with your source is this. Let me show you. Let me show you real quick. It's dated back to 2007. 2007. And not only that, not only that, Kui Mayo, Mayo, is that they never said that it was impossible in your own source. It says... However, each test examines less than 1% of the test taker's DNA and sheds light on only one ancestor each generation. So they never said that it couldn't be done. They never said it couldn't be done. Rick Kittles was telling you guys he had the largest African database. So, you can get this whole... Wait, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because I'm not done yet. Because I was going to say we can get this whole article. But let's go. Stay with me, people. Stay with your brother, YK, the truth. I'm going to show you how to beat up these pseudos with their own references. Now, let us go to the third person. Troy Duster, and this is going to be a body bag, right? Now, let's see what, let's move this over real quick. Let's see what Troy Duster, he had a, he got a video on YouTube, and it's called, um, and it was actually created a, a year after the article that Cody and Mayo shared with us, and let's see what he has to say. And if he believes that you can't trace your ancestry through your DNA and your Y chromosome. Making a determination from the DNA of race. Should you actually use it? Well, Y chromosome analysis, you can get definitive answers. You can find out whether father's 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 father is linked with Y chromosome. Did, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let me play that back. Let me play that back because that's Troy Duster. Okay? Let me play it back. Let me play it back. And this is for Cootie Mayo. This is your. I'm beating you up with your own people. I'm beating you up with your own people. Let's go. Making a determination from the DNA of race. Should you actually use it? Should you use well, it? Well, Y chromosome analysis, you can get definitive answers. You can find out whether father's 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 father is linked with Y chromosome. Now, is it possible? Yes. This, I'm, this, this is your own source saying that it's possible. Rick Kittles is helping us find a common ancestor that we all share. I don't know what y'all think African ancestry is trying to claim. Basically, it would make sense that that's the tribe that we were from. We all share that common ancestor with the people that are in that location. Do you understand what I'm saying? Us and that person at that location share the, share the same common ancestor. 
Simple. This is why they say he's he's. This is why Rick Kittle says he's only using a tiny per, um percent of your DNA. One percent. Less than one percent. Because it's a lot of DNA. But then you have Indians, so-called Indians, that would like to take it out of context text and say that he's saying that he's only he one percent accurate. That's not what he's saying. He's saying he's only examining a small percent of your DNA. It doesn't mean that it's a small percent accurate. It's accurate, but he's only using a small percent of it. So, Troy Duster said, you can. Right along that line. You can find that with mitochondrial, mother's mother's mother. So you can find out that information. So if we both share that those genetic markers, obviously we uh, we share the same ancestry. It's simple. It's not trying to tell us a, a specific person. It's just letting us know that we come from these people because we share those same genetic markers. I mean, it's not hard to understand. So I done beat you up with three. Three. Let's go to where I beat you up with. I beat you up with three of your own sources. Three. The very first, and I'm pretty sure if I go to Richard S. Cooper, I'm going to find the same thing. Okay? So, genetic testing can be done. It's not a hoax. Alright? It's not a hoax. So, let's keep going. Let's listen to this. Alright? Because he claims that he's debunking Henry Gates and Rick Kittles. Don't share this video no more. This video was terrible. And we can have a debate on this. Is DNA test false or not? I will tear any Aboriginal up in the community on this topic. You won't pick this topic with me. In the year 2000. In the year 2000. In the year 2000. A young black geneticist named Dr. Rick Kittles. Who at the time was teaching at Howard University, sent me a letter. He's now at the University of Chicago Medical School. And he said that he was asking various African-American men if they would um, submit themselves to this new test. And through this test, he could trace on your mother's line where in Africa you were from. Man, that was... Some now listen. Now let's pause that, right? Let's pause that. Because as you can see... This was new. So was this around the time? Was this about around the time as that medical science journal that um Cootie Mayo shared? Because if that was around the same time, that would prove that that article is outdated. That would mean that that article is outdated. That scientific article. And then you already see that um Troy Duster, one of his sources I beat up, he clearly said you can trace your why. So, Dr. Rick Kittles did not lie according to your own source. Serious stuff. And I said, yeah, I mean, I called him right away and I said, definitely. How badly do I wanna know where I'm from in Africa? But I really wanted to know, I'd wanted to know since I was nine years old, so, you know, let's go for it. I said, Rick, what's up, man? Where am I from in Africa? Where are my people? You know, I wanted to jump on a plane and go. I thought I'd buy some land, you know. Get a fine little African sister, you know, to hook up. I was single at the time, don't get me wrong. I'm still single. Well. <laughs> so... He said, well, we had to run, your results were anomalous. And we had to run them many times. But we finally have figured out where you're from. You are 
descended on your mother's side from the Nubian people. Mm. Now, all African Americans, not all African Americans, but many African Americans want to be descended from one or two ethnic groups. Either the Zulu, because of Chaka Zulu, and the Zulu kicked the English in the behind in the Boer Wars, right? Until they finally were overcome. But you want to be Zulu, or you want to be Nubian. Who were the Nubians? The Nubians were the black pharaohs. And so, a Nubian, and all these people wanted to be Nubians, descended from the black pharaohs. So I called Malefi first thing. I said, Malefi, I just got my results back. I am a Nubian. Where are you from? <laughs> I am the true African prince. <laughs> <laughs> now, my question is, how, how do you debunk something like that? My friend Anthony Appiah, who is, whose uncle was the Asante Hini, the king of the Asante people. When Rick Kittle sent me a certificate announcing I was Nubian, Anthony Appiah looked at it and said, what a ton of rubbish. <laughs> now why would he say that? Well, there's a slight problem with being either Zulu or Nubian, if you're African American. <laughs> you know what the problem is? None of our ancestors in, who came here in slavery came from South Africa, the Zulu people, or from Nubia. None. Zero. There's a slight problem with being either Zulu or Nubian, if you're African American. You know what the problem is? None of our ancestors in, who came here in slavery came from South Africa, the Zulu people, or from Nubia. None. Zero. When we gave, when Oprah was finally in, in the first series, and we gave her a DNA test, basically the next day she went to South Africa to announce that she was opening her, what became the Oprah Winfrey Leadership Academy. She was in an auditorium of like 75,000 people or something, and she announced that she just had the test and the was Zulu. So I, it broke on CNN. I was sitting in my living room minding my own business and said, Oprah Winfrey's a Zulu. So I called Rick Kittles and I said, Rick, did you tell Oprah she was a Zulu? He goes, no, man, she made that up herself. <laughs> it's a true story. It's a true story. I would lie to make you laugh, but I'm telling you a true story. So I said, Rick, are you in your lab? He said, yeah. I said, is anybody there? He said, no. I said, when the results come in, make her Zulu, man. <laughs> you know? I said, you back there making it up anyway. <laughs> Don't nobody believe you can take some spit and figure out a tribe? What are you, crazy? <laughs> Don't nobody believe you could take some spit and figure out a tribe? What are you, crazy? <laughs> now, now, this is the part that most of these pretendians leave out. They'd be like, well, um, Louis Gates said that you can't do it with no spit. You can't. This is him being sarcastic. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? But check it out, though. See, this is the part that they leave out. You know what I mean? They always cut that part out. Well, you can't chase no spit. And then, 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 then. But let's see what he says in that same video. Don't use that shit anymore. Don't bring up Henry Louis Gates. This is the kind of amazing stuff that we discovered. Now, we gave everybody in the series three tests. Um, if you're a man, we gave you a Y-DNA test. If you're a woman who had a male descendant of the father or the grandfather, we gave th that man a Y-DNA test. The reason the men are men in this room is because of Y-DNA, but women don't have Y-DNA. We all have mitochondrial DNA, and your mitochondrial DNA you, d you inherit from your mother. Your Y-DNA from your father, if you're a man, is exactly the same. Your mitochondrial DNA from your mother is exactly the same. Yours is, whether you're a man or woman, is the same as your mother's, hers is the same as her mother's, hers is the same as her mother's. That's why they can trace you back to Lucy, or trace us all back to Lucy through your DNA. And finally, the pie chart is your admixture, in which we um, examine how, uh, how much African ancestry you have, how much Native American or Asian ancestry, or how much European ancestry. Um, and this chart shows you the number of ancestors you have of the sixth generation. We have um, two parents, you have four grandparents, you have eight great-grandparents, 16 great-great-grandparents, all the way up to 64 uh, great-great-grandparents. Uh, 
And this is how your DNA markers are passed down. Your Y DNA is passed down from a father to his sons, and a mitochondrial DNA is passed down from a mother to the son or daughter. And what we do to trace your African ancestry, we have this huge database, we go all over Africa testing people, and we say, what is your ethnic group? And they might say Igbo or Yoruba, and then we test this young lady right there, and if you match in the computer, it's like ding. If you have the same mitochondrial DNA structure as the person who says they're Igbo, and lots of Igbo people, then that means you share an Igbo ancestry in common. It's as simple and as complicated. It's over. It's a wrap. It's over. It's a wrap. Play the whole damn video in this context. Play the whole video, not what was done before. In the year 2000, in the year 2000, what is done now? I, I just got that out of here. I just got, I just demolished you. Let's keep going. Now that we got, so we got the first article out the way. Now we got the Henry Louis Gates out the way. Now we are about to get the 60 minutes out of the way. So you don't, y'all Indians don't got that no more thanks to YK The Truth. Y'all don't have that anymore as far as DNA go, which means you got to go and get that ass a DNA test. Get that ass a DNA test. Because your arguments, boop, they shot. It shot. Get that ass a DNA test. Let's keep going. As that. We call it guilt by association. Now, let me ask you a question. All right, let me ask you a question, Cootie Mayo. If they testing us back 500 years, right? And we share the same genetic markers as those people in the African continent, wouldn't that mean that we originate from the African continent? Wouldn't that mean that we share the same common ancestor with them? And we are not native Americans checkmate wouldn't that mean that DNA testing is not a hoax because we know he just said that they test back 500 years so you gotta get that clip the hell play the entire video don't cherry pick the part you need play it all when you have an article look at the people who wrote the article what do they believe because if you believe that they say DNA testing is a hoax then you also have to believe everything else this is why they gotta start saying things like um, the, the transatlantic slave trade was in reverse because that way we could still say, okay, well, even though there's records that we came from Africa, we was in America first. But that failed. You you got debunked on that because you say it's impossible. So you it's a lose-lose for you natives, so-called natives. You getting this work. Okay, so now that we got that out the way, let's go to the 60-minute, back to the 60-minute because they love to use that video. So after this video, I'm, I'm about to just body this video, yo. They ain't gonna be able to use this again. Watch this, let me show y'all something real quick. And figure out a try. <laughs> Let's go, Let's but get the it. the problem is, Sierra Leone wasn't the only answer Vi got. A company called Relative Genetics found a match to a single person in the Wobi tribe in the Ivory Coast. Different? Now, I got all excited about... Now, let's stop right there. African Ancestry has the largest African database. Wouldn't it make sense to go to them? Because it's a greater chance you're going to get an accurate testing. They got the largest database. Those other companies do not. So let's keep going. That's just one thing 
that they failed to mention. That and this uh -huh. is different? Now how could that happen? Then a third company, Trace Genetics. Your particular sequence matches sequences reported among multiple uh-oh Mendanka individuals in Senegal. What's up with this? And Family Tree so DNA, the company that linked Vi with Marion in the first place, came up with a whole list of matches. This goes on and on. My goodness. Now, though the other ones say Family Tree, uh, different names, and but African ancestry. So they specifically focus on your African ancestry. That avoids all the other chaos. This is why they say they're only using a small percent of your DNA. Or they're only examining a small percent of your DNA. Goodness. So what do we know about Vi's ancestry? The DNA does indicate that she has distant relatives in the Mende tribe. But she also has relatives in all those other tribes. So no one can say for sure where Vi's maternal ancestor actually came from. So no one can say for sure. You know what they can say for sure though? Even though those, they're off because they don't have the largest database. It can show that they're all taking her ass back to Africa. They can show that part. White lady. They can show that part, white lady. Let's go. Where Vi's maternal ancestor actually came from. For DNA kits called into question. They are the kind advertised on TV claiming to trace your ancestry. A woman says she used two different popular services to trace her family history and got wildly different results. Fox 32's Tia Ewing reports. And I was shocked. Smith's breakdown from Ancestry showed 97% European and 2% Asian. I'm a black girl. I am not a Jewish white lady. I'm, I'm black. My parents were black. She contacted Ancestry with questions, but says a rep told her the results are accurate. She told me there was no way they could have made an error. Smith decided to try again, but this time she submitted a DNA to 23andMe. And the results were very different, but they were not a surprise to me. Did you know that in Texas? Hold on, I hate these ads. In public Let me skip this real quick. Whereas in Florida, no one. Could the 23andMe findings showed 70 percent African for Smith, after Ancestry's findings showed none. Both kids can't be right. One of them has to be wrong. The these DNA tests for ethnicity. Are Entertainment value only. Entertainment value only. Entertainment value. Now, let me tell you why he's wrong, right? African ancestry is different than those other sites, okay? And I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to prove it to you. Can you trace your ethnicity through DNA, right? It's a yes and a no answer. And I'm going to prove it to you based on this. Check it out. Let's go. It says, can you tell your ethnic identity from your DNA? The answer to whether a DNA can tell you your ethnic identity is yes and no. We know that when it comes to DNA, geography matters. That's just plain and simple, right? Although in principle, anyone can mate with anyone else. But in practice, we tend to mate with people nearby. Right? If we could assemble all the DNA of everyone everywhere, we would expect to find that people living near each other were more likely to be genetically similar than people living farther apart. Okay? In principle, then it ought to be possible to compare the DNA of an arbitrarily selected individual with DNA from around the world to make a judgment of that individual's genetic origins. Direct-to-consumer ancestry companies offer just this kind of admission test 
and it is not uncommon for consumers to be told that they have a certain percent of African or Asian or Native American DNA. But there are problems with tests of this kind. Now watch, I'm going to break it down to you so you understand what I'm talking about. I'm going to break it down to you. All right. It says data have been collected for different purposes and different companies have access to different data bases. That is why different companies may give you different results. It doesn't mean that DNA testing is a hoax, it's a scam. It simply means that you don't have the same database. I keep telling y'all this. African ancestry has the largest database with over 30,000 lineages hence the term African ancestry entertainment value only no it's not entertainment value no matter how many times you play it it is not entertainment value value only it is not it is not you only William Gilliland is a biology professor at DePaul. He says DNA kits can be great for connecting family members and finding relatives. DNA kits can be great for finding family members and relatives. So DNA tests is, are not false. <laughs> but the science for ethnicity testing isn't as concrete. So he basically said that you could basically trait your relatives. But you can't trace your eth eth ethnicity. <laughs> Yo, a lot of times, these videos, they debunk themselves. Just like I'm about to debunk 60 Minutes with 60 Minutes. There's nothing that confident for ethnicity. There's no diagnostic nucleotide. You can say, this person is from Europe, this person is from Africa. It's exciting. That's bullshit. There's discoveries like this, but if they're not true, it's heartbreaking. <laughs> no, it is. It's very true. It's just the people that's telling you this, they don't have the um the correct answer. They didn't give you the correct answer, and I just gave you the correct answer. They don't have that database. That's all, sister. They don't have it. They don't have it. Now, this is my favorite because <laughs> they love going to these people. But, you know, they only accept science when it fits them. You you ever noticed that? Everything else is a hoax. By the certificate. It's got extremely now, if this same man said that it was real, they wouldn't even look at him. But because he say, okay, it's it's not real, they gonna go get him. It's called cherry picking. And it meant so very much. People want to believe. They want to believe they've gotten an answer. And it's not fair of us to let them believe that we're giving them certain answers because scientifically, we just can't. Hank Greeley is concerned that the science isn't really there yet for, for you to be giving them the name of a tribe. I think for most companies, I, I would be concerned too. But what about your own company? For most company, I would be concerned too. Because they don't have what we have. It's simple. We, we have he didn't the largest... exclude you. <laughs> he included you. But we have the largest um, uh, set of uh, sequences from Africa. And so... We have the largest set of sequences from Africa. Other companies do not. With that, with that, we're able to provide some level of probability in terms of frequency. But he would say that even though you have the largest database, it's still small on the scope of things. As I said, I share those, those concerns. With other companies. Now watch. They're going to they're gonna actually... <laughs> Yo, this is the illest checkmate. 
y'all about to see or ever experience. I hope you stuck around. Watch this. And that's the rub. This business of genetic genealogy is fraught with limitations. For one thing, it can only provide information about a tiny fraction of our ancestry. It can only provide a, a tiny percent of our ancestry. So does it mean that it can't be done? Let me play it back. Let me play it back. Thing, it can only provide information about a tiny fraction of our ancestry. Because we get half our DNA from our mothers and half from our fathers, almost all of our DNA gets shuffled and remixed every generation. Right, but you always keep that same Y and that those same chromosomes. The maternal and the paternal. It is what it is. It's going to be passed down. This is what you guys fail to understand and fail to realize. It's impossible to trace what comes from whom. There are just two bits of DNA that remain pure. The Y chromosome, which passes directly from father to son. And this is what they use, lady. But you're sitting here trying to debunk them. You can't. And something called mitochondrial DNA, which passes unchanged from mother to child. Unchanged. It passes unchanged. Hank Greeley, a law professor at Stanford University. A law professor at Stanford University. So he don't even he don't even put in what Rick Kittles put in. The decades and decades of genetic work. He's not a geneticist. With the largest African database. He's a law professor. Currently at that time, he was a law professor. Even if he do have background in other things, he's not qualified enough. So this whole video has been debunked. DNA tests are not false. Rick Kittles never said that it's 0.1% accurate. Never. He said he only used a small portion it's of your DNA. Generation, generation, great, great, great. You've got two listen. Listen. When you say it's a tiny little amount. Listen. This is what they take out of context. Listen. Of pointing out the limitations. But... And businesses often don't go around telling you how weak their product is. We don't oversell. I mean, we just say, look, we provide a service. If you're interested in exploring a tiny bit of your DNA and trace its ancestry, we can do that. If you're interested in exploring a tiny percent of your DNA, does that mean that it's a tiny percent accurate? He just, see how they misinterpreted and took what he said out of context? He never said it was not accurate. When you say it's a tiny little amount, it's less than 0.1 percent. Out, it's less than 0.1 percent. Out, it's less than 0.1 percent. Out, it's less than 0.1 percent of your DNA. No matter how many times you try to play it back, it's not saying it's one zero point one percent accurate. But you're reaching for the stars. You're reaching. Out, it's less than 0.1 percent, and that's pretty teeny. Yeah, but for people who know nothing about any of them, I think it's very important. Exactly. So, I debunked that whole entire video. In the beginning, he shared an article about three of those people believe in um, DNA testing. And I'm pretty sure if I do one more, they're going to believe in DNA testing. I showed you that he didn't play all of the video by Henry Gates. And actually, they created a new thing. 
that was what you call um, misleading, intentionally leaving out the rest of the video for whatever purpose or reason. So, take this video and get it out of here. You might as well just take it off of YouTube, but you're going to leave it up. Because that's what pseudos do. So, it's your brother, YK The Truth. And I'm out. Peace.